We talked about the uh, call option valuation, how to value, I mean, what, are, what the factors are uh, that affect the, uh, uh, the, the value of a call option and so on, okay? So uh, let's talk about one other or some other um, similar uh, derivatives, okay? Uh, the, uh, the first one here today is convertible security, okay? For example, convertible bond or convertible uh, preferred stock, okay? And uh, these items, when they are issued, okay, uh, they come with convertible feature. Okay, which means it will say the indenture will say at some point in time, if you want, okay, you can convert these uh, long-term securities, either bond or, or uh, preferred stocks, into common stock. Okay? And it will specify some periods, okay? time periods uh, during which you can convert right? or exercise this conversion uh, right. Okay? And also the conversion price, okay? uh, and uh, and so on, right? Some details. Okay? All right. So why would they do this? Why would they uh, issue convertible securities when they issue this long-term debt? Okay? First one is to reduce agency costs. We talked about agency costs many times. Okay? Uh, we're talking about the, the conflict of interest between bondholders and stockholders, okay? So, uh, in, uh, you know, depending on the situation, well, in this particular situation, we're saying bondholders are principals, okay? They are the ones uh, who lent their money, invested their money, right? And uh, the stockholders, in other words, the owners, okay? Owners are supposed to, uh, uh, take care of uh, the principal's interest, okay? bondholder's interest. Okay? So they are supposed to do everything possible to, uh, I guess, make money and ensure that the, uh, they are able to pay back the interest and principal, uh, principal okay? uh, to the, uh, the bondholders. Okay? But, you know, the owners may have different objective. Right? Their objective is, of course, maximizing profit, okay? maximizing shareholder wealth. Okay? And for that purpose, they may in engage their, themselves in some risky projects, okay? which doesn't help bondholders. Bondholders only receive interest payment and their principal back, right? uh, the, whether the company really maximizes profit or not doesn't matter to uh, uh, bondholders, right? So, you know, there can be some uh, uh, the costs involved or, or, or emanating from that uh, conflict of interest. For example, bondholders want to make sure that uh, these uh, stockholders do not engage themselves in um, too much risk, right? So they may increase their monitoring and uh, supervising all kinds of restrictions, right? Uh, when the company wants to get into some business, right? Bondholders may prevent, okay, in their indenture, right? Uh, prevent all kinds of activities, right? So if you can somehow match or bring these two uh, interests together or closer together, right? Then you can reduce this kind of uh, agency cost, right? So by uh, giving an option to bondholders uh, to convert their loans into share, shares, right? The out, what is it? The, um, the profit sharing, for example, right? Converting the debt into the, the stocks, which means they can share the profit of the company, right? Uh, you can reduce the agency costs. Okay, that's the the, uh, the purpose. I guess one of the preliminary primary purpose. Okay, and also that's going to lower interest payments or dividends. We're talking about dividend on preferred stock. Okay, so uh, when the bondholders or preferred preferred stockholders. 
they, when they know that they can share uh, the profit of the company, they may be willing to accept a little lower interest payments on their loan okay, or a little lower dividend on their uh, preferred stock. Okay. So by including this convertible feature in the uh, uh, indenture, right, company can actually offer a little lower interest okay, or a little lower dividend on preferred stock. Okay. Typically, about 3%, they say. Okay. Convertible bonds offer about 3% on average okay, low interest <coughs> compared to non-convertible bonds. Okay. Another advantage of issuing convertible security, convertible bond, is uh, in essence, they are selling their common stock at the price which is higher than the price when the bond is issued. Okay? So today, let's say uh, this company is trying to issue the bond. Okay? In other words, they are trying to borrow more money. right? And currently, their uh, share price is $30. Okay? Uh, but uh, in the indenture for the bond, they may say the conversion price is $35. So at some point in the future, they say five years later, between five years and seven years from now, right? You can convert <coughs> um, this bond. Let's say par value of the bond is one thousand okay? dollar. Uh, at thirty-five dollars uh, a share. Okay. So what that means is if you divide one thousand by 35, okay? then uh, let's make it simple, <laughs> 40. Okay? Uh, yeah. okay, so current price is 30, but uh, say conversion price specified in the indenture is 40, right? And that means uh, you can basically receive 25 shares, right, for each bond that you hold, right? Does it make sense? Okay? So that's the idea of the conversion ratio, right? Par value divided by conversion price, okay? As 25, right? That's the conversion ratio, right? But in effect, what the company is doing is, okay, right now, if we want to sell the, the, the stocks, right? We can only receive $30 per share, right? But uh, by including the conversion feature and setting the conversion price at $40, in effect, we are <coughs> setting the future stock price to $40 a share, right? So when the bond is actually converted into stocks, right, then in, in effect, the company is charging $40 a share, right? That's what this means. Sell common stock at a higher price than the prevailing market price at the time of issue, okay? Another benefit is it allows time for investments to pay benefits. Right? What, what does that mean? Right? Um, company borrows money right now by selling bonds, right? and they're going to invest this money and make profit. Right? And until uh, this conversion is exercised, until the bondholder actually converts their bond into shares, they don't have to pay dividend, right? So if the conversion period is five years away, right? Basically, the company can use this money to make profit, and they don't have to share their profit for five years. Well, of course, they have to pay interest on the bond, right? But uh, they don't have to pay any dividend, right? That's what uh, this means. Allows time for investments to pay benefit, right? Okay, uh, so typical conversion price, this conversion price, typical con conversion price is about 15 to 30 percent higher <coughs> than the current market price, prevailing market price. Okay? All right. <coughs> 
So what about the, uh, the valuation? How do you uh, value or assess the, uh, the value of the convertible securities? We can think about three different concepts. Okay? First of all, conversion value. Sorry, I, <clears throat> let me turn down this heat. this um, scratchy throat still, and now lens is giving the problem for <laughs> this uh, dry, dry, hot air really bothers me. All right. So the conversion value is simply um, the stock price times the conversion ratio, right? So in this example, Conversion ratio is 25, right? So when the time comes, uh, uh, you're going to be able to convert uh, your bond into uh, sh the, the common stock at that time, right? So what's the market price at that time, right? Even though conversion price is $40, right? Since you're holding the the, uh, the bond, right? You are guaranteed to receive 25 shares for each bond you are holding, right? The, the question is, what is the market price of the shares at that time, right? If the market price is $50, okay? Then 50 times 25 will be what? Uh, 1,250, right? right? So conversion value will be 1,250, okay? Market price of shares times uh, conversion ratio, right? And then uh, there is a straight bond value. Okay? Straight bond value, well, you've seen that formula a thousand times <laughs> by now, right? That's the present value of the bond. Okay? So the interest payment and principal, which is par value, of course. <clears throat> and then the, the discount rate, KD, right? And uh, N, number of periods remaining, right? So depending on these four values, right, you can calculate the present value of the bond. Okay? That's what we call straight bond value. Okay? And then finally, there is a market value. So, what is it exactly, right? Uh, I mean, when you when you have this convertible bond, right? Conver convertible bonds can be traded in the market, right? And what's the current market price of this convertible security, convertible convertible bond, actually, right? Um, <clears throat> it says a higher of conversion or straight bond value plus conversion premium. Yeah, you have to understand this. You have to give me about one minute right, to explain this. Right? But uh, market value is simply market value, right? what uh, you have to pay to purchase this convertible bond in the market. Right? All right, here's the chart. Here's the, uh, the thing. <clears throat> All right, um, so based on, okay, let me give you all the numbers here. In the textbook example, in the example in the chapter, there is a company called ARI, okay? And the uh, conversion price is set to $84. Conversion price. Okay? So, when the uh, the bondholder wants to convert their bond into the share, right? Uh, the, 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 the exercise price is eighty-four dollars. Okay? Uh, share price. I guess this doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, I 
think I have it wrong here. The share price at the time of conversion is $65. Okay. So the conversion ratio What is the conversion ratio in this situation? Conversion ratio is power value divided by conversion price, right? So that's 1,000 divided by 84 comes out to be 11.9, right? Straight bond value is summation of sixty one twenty five. Apparently, the coupon rate coupon rate was six point one two five, six and one eighth. Okay, in the old days. I mean, these days, uh, the, 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 the stock price and bond price are quoted in, in fraction, like 0 0.125, right? But uh, in the old days, it's 618, 638, you know, they use this eighth, right? So one eighth is 0 0.125, right? So this is 6.125. Right? Apparently, they offer the 6 and 1 eighth as a coupon rate, right? So the coupon payment, interest payment is $61.25, right? 1,000 times 0 0.06125. Right? That's how 61.25 came around. Is that right? Yeah, 61.25, okay? All right, so that's the interest payment, okay? And apparently the, uh, the interest rate is 9%, uh, right? And plus... Uh, power value, of course, is 1,000, 1.09, and this is a 25 year remaining. Okay, so that came around 700, 118, 700, 118 dollar as a straight bond value. Okay, what conversion value? Is the current stock price 65 times the conversion ratio 11.9 comes out to be uh, 774. Okay, I think that's all the numbers that uh, you need. Right? Okay. So here. If you look at this chart, on the horizontal axis we have stock price, on the vertical axis we have dollar value, okay? And so the straight bond value, 718, look at the 718, we got straight bond value of 718, right? That's uh, right here, about a little above 700 here, right? So straight bond value, right? And it has nothing to do with the stock price, doesn't depend on stock price, right? So that's a horizontal line here, right? And then uh, we have this blue line. Blue line is a conversion or stock value. Okay? Conversion value depends on the stock price, right? Conversion value depends on current stock price, 
right? So as the stock price increases, conversion value increases, right? And when the stock price, current stock price is $65, right? At $65, we find out that the conversion value is 774 okay? Uh, what about this crossing? Can you find that crossing point? What will be, well, of course, the, the, the Y value, at, at this point, Y value is 718, right? What about X value? Can you find X value? In other words, at which, uh, at which stock price the conversion value will be 718? How can you calculate that? If the conversion value is 700, what? 18, okay, yeah, 718. Conversion ratio is 11.9. You can calculate that, right? Yeah. Using this concept, right? So that will be, looks like that's a little bit, a little above $60 something, right? You can just divide 718 by 11.9, right? Okay, so that's uh, this crossing point, right? So we have straight bond value, 718, right? And then we have conversion value, which is positively related to the stock price, right? So we have two um, separate values, right? And then we have market value, this the red curve is a market value, right? And theoretically, market value is above the conversion value or straight bond value. Actually, it is above the larger one between the conversion value and straight bond value. In other words, here, when the straight bond value is greater than the conversion value, market value is above the straight bond value. And the difference between the two is called the conversion premium. Because when the, let's say currently stock price is only $55, right? Then when you calculate the, the, the conversion value, it comes out something like uh, about $630, only $630, right? <coughs> But if you sell this convertible security in the market, what are you going to get? Right? Do you understand? If you currently, right now, the stock price of this company is only $55. Right? So if you multiply 11.9 to 55, you get only about 600 something, 630. Right? But if you put this convertible bond in the market, you're going to get a little more than that. Why? Because of this calculation. Present value of this bond is $718, right? It has nothing to do with the stock price. It only has to do with the coupon rate and the current discount rate and number of years remaining, right? So. Theoretically, ideally, right, uh, the, 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 the actual value of this uh, convertible bond should be like this, this one and this one, right? So if you have blue and I don't have green. If it goes like that, right, then up to this stock price, right, the market value has to be this. And starting from this point, the market value has to be this, 
follow this blue line, right, theoretically. So to the left, to the left of, let's say that's P star. That's a stock price, right? Stock price. When the stock price is below P star, right, then uh, if you sell this bond in the market, you should receive this straight bond value, right, based on this calculation, right? <clears throat> but when the stock price goes above the P star, right, then uh, you should receive this conversion value, okay, this conversion value. But in reality, what the, the chart is showing is in reality, the market value is slightly above, slightly above that uh, uh, straight bond value and, uh, and uh, a conversion value, right? Why? Can you think of why? Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, because you have an option, flexibility, right? Why uh, the, the, the value of convertible security is a little bit higher than the actual theoretical calculation, right? Because you have an option, either you can keep it as a bond if you want. You don't have to convert, that's an option, right? So uh, depending on the situation, you can just keep it as a bond and just keep receiving the interest payment. And when the maturity comes, you can receive the, the par value back. It's up, it's up to you, right? Or if you think that converting it into the uh, stock is more advantageous, you can do so, right? So there is some value in that option, flexibility, right? Okay? So market rewards that kind of flexibility choice, okay? And uh, there has to be some premium. So the difference between this theoretical value and actual market value, that difference is called the market premium or yeah, conversion, prim conversion premium, okay? Let me ask you another question. Suppose, um, um, let's say P star here is, uh, say, 600, um, whatever, uh, $40. I mean, I mean, sorry, $64, okay? And right now, the stock price is $60. And uh, the conversion period has arrived. So within next a year or so, you have to decide whether you're gonna convert it or not, okay? After one year, uh, when the conversion period expires, then you, don't, you cannot convert it, right? But the current six stock price is only $60, okay? So uh, if you calculate the conversion price, conversion value is a little bit lower than the, the straight bond value. Would you convert? if based on the current stock price, conversion value is a little bit lower than the, the straight bond value, would you convert or would you keep it as a bond? Okay, well, expectation on what? Future stock price. Right? If you think the stock price is gonna, is gonna go up in the future, right? Then you will convert, of course, right? If you don't, then if you think that the, the, the company's business is not good, right? So there's a little chance that um, stock price will actually appreciate, right? In that case, you might as well just keep it as a bond and just keep receiving the interest payment. Right? That's the idea, right? So the, you have to understand, uh, that's why uh, this distance, 
the conversion premium is the greatest when uh, the stock price, the, the, when, when the conversion price is equal to the um, uh, straight bond price, state straight bond value. Yeah? If, if stock price is really low, like $40, okay, then it's pretty simple. I mean, there is no option or choice, right? If stock price is really low, then obviously the company is not doing very well, right? And there is no, ch no, no uh, well, possibility of consideration of conversion, right? So that option is really worthless, right? It, even though you're holding the convertibility option, in reality, there is no chance that you will convert, right? So you might as well just uh, use it as a, as a bond, right? So in the market, investors think, investors view, right? That option is just worthless, right? So the market price will be pretty close to the, the straight bond value, right? Uh, if the price, stock price is really high, then the opposite situation, right? There's no question about it, right? You have to convert it. Right? If you hold it like as a bond, then you are losing a lot of money. Right? So again, that option is useless. So clear. Right? So the option, whether you're converting, whether you will convert or not, right? that option is the most valuable when you have this choice, when the choice is valuable, right? depending on your estimation, your uh, judgment, okay? whether you're going to convert it or not, right? And uh, this convertibility gives you that option when uh, this conversion value is close to straight bond value, okay? Right? So that's why the market value will look like that, okay? that red curve, okay? I think that's all you need to understand based uh, from this chart. Okay. Any question about this chart? Okay. If the conversion period expires, then the, the, there will be no premium, right? Okay. <clears throat> so conversion can occur voluntarily or it can be forced. How can the company force the conversion? Well, by calling the bond. Okay? So, you know, the, well, obviously, I mean, it implies that uh, when the company issued this convertible bond, they also put the call feature. Right? So, uh, if the, the, the bondholders do not convert them voluntarily, then they can call the bond okay, at lower price than the conversion value, right? Then, the, well, the investors who can crunch the number, right, they will convert. Okay? Why would the company do that? What's the benefit of forcing the conversion? Yeah. Well, that allows the company to remove the long-term debt without using cash to redeem it, right? So if the, the bondholders convert their bond into stocks, right, then uh, uh, the uh, company doesn't have to pay it back. In other words, they're, fr they're from their balance sheet, right? Suddenly, a huge amount of their debt disappears. Does it make sense? Okay. Even though now the number of shares increased, right? So there is a problem of dilution, right? Uh, and uh, that means you are sharing your profit with more owners, okay? But at least you can remove the debt without paying any cash, right? That's the benefit of the uh, conversion, right? 
So that's why would, yeah, the, the company would force the conversion by calling the pawn. Yeah. Okay. Companies are required to disclose the potential dilution by reporting both a primary EPS. Primary EPS means uh, it's an EPS based on current outstanding number of shares, number of outstanding shares. Okay. Fully diluted EPS means uh, uh, it is it, when when an EPS is calculated, they consider all potential number of issues, right? So when all the convertible securities are converted into stocks, right, what will be the total number of shares, right? And uh, you use that number to calculate the fully diluted EPS. Yeah? And you have to um, specify, you have to, uh, uh, what? Reveal, right, both numbers in the... Uh, your report, right? Filing, sorry, filing. Uh, SEC filing, right? Okay. That's the uh, convertible security. Convertible bonds or convertible preferred stock. Okay? Another type of, of derivative is called the warrant. Okay? Warrant is another type of option Warrants are company issued options Company issued options to purchase a specific number of shares, a specific specific number of shares at a set price at a set price during a certain time period. Time period. usually five to 10 years. Okay. And uh, typically many times issued as a sweetener uh, with a new debt. It's a company-issued option. It, it is an, something I have not discussed. Okay? Uh, previously, when I talked about call option or put option for G, right? who issued this option? Who sold this option? Have you thought about it? Who usually issue these options, call option, put option. Huh? Investment, Investment banker. Uh, trying to find out. What? Individuals. Individual investors. Right? So this people like me. I told you. I sold the uh, uh, G put option. So in, uh, 
it is traded by the, the stock brokers in the market, but ultimately, I think it's invest. I mean, individual investors. Right? Ultimately, I'm not sure. I'm trying to think whether investment bankers will issue. I, I, I don't think so. Right? Ultimately, it's individual, individual uh, investors. Right? So it's up to you whether you want to, if you want to sell or, yeah, if you want to sell call option or put option, it's up to you. Okay? But this warrants a company issued options. Okay? When a company, usually, the usual typical situation is when they try to uh, sell a new debt or issue a new bond, new debt, right? Uh, sometimes it's hard to sell. I mean, if you really want to make it attractive, uh, to investors, you may have to offer really high interest, right? And if you you don't want to do that, right? You don't want to promise too high interest, right? In that case, you can use uh, warrants, okay? So you can attach warrants to the uh, uh, bonds, okay? Say, well, if you lend money, if you buy if you buy this bond, you also get this warrant, okay? And warrant is an option, right? option to purchase a specific number of shares at a set price during a certain time period. Right? So it's quite similar to convertible bond. Very similar to convertible bond. It has a strike price or exercise price. Right? Uh, in convertible security, it's conversion price. Right? Uh, in warrant, it's called the exercise price because you are exercising your Option, okay, uh, and at a, during a certain period of time, it also has some expiration, right? Expiration, of the conversion period is usually five to ten years. Between five ten years, right? You can exercise this option, right? Um, I had a friend, well, friend. I, I, I am currently a, 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 a what is it, advisory board director, right? a board member at a at a company. Right? It's a plastic company, Wilbert Plastics in South Carolina. Uh, but uh, that was the um, second company. The first company, which uh, I started as a board director, right, uh, was acquired by this company. Okay. And uh, there's an interesting story. This uh, owner, basically, he hired me as a as a as a director, board advisory board director, okay. and he started this business with only about forty thousand, forty, four hundred thousand, yeah, four hundred thousand. of his own money. Yeah. So using this uh, $400,000, he purchased a $7 million company. Okay. So he borrowed uh, from the bank about $2 million, okay. and the rest, about $5.5 million, he uh, raised from private investors. Okay. So he purchased a $7 million company, and about seven years later, seven years later, during which time he hired me as a board director, right? And he sold it at 20 million to the current company, right? The Wilbert Plastic. Right? Uh, the reason why he could do that was uh, during this time he. Uh, got uh, Hyundai and Kia right, as a customer. Right? So he uh, opened the relationship with the Hyundai and Kia and started supplying the, this plastic components to Hyundai and Kia. Yeah? So this second company, the Wilbert Plastic, was a much larger company, and uh, they wanted this business. Right? 
Hyundai and Kia automobile business. Okay? So they paid 20 million and uh, purchased this company. Okay? Anyway, so the story is when the, this final deal, $20 million deal was uh, signed, okay? so he was going to pay off, what, about, oh, yeah, about $6.5 million to the private investors and bank, right? So he was going to net, what, about $14, $13 million pure profit, right? But uh, there, was a, there was a hitch, there was a hiccup, right? Because when he issued the original bond, he attached warrants. Okay? And uh, the warrant, the, uh, the, the period, okay, exercise period has not expired yet. Okay? So uh, when uh, he was trying to sell the company, suddenly this, the bondholders, okay, they realized that, whoa, oh, this warrant is really worth now. Okay? Because uh, you know there are a certain number of shares outstanding, okay? and if the company value is twenty million dollars, right? suddenly if you divide the, by the number of shares, right, the each share is worth quite a lot. Right? So they suddenly they wanted to exercise their warrant, okay? and apparently this guy was uh, forgetting about it. <laughs> The warrant, so he had to go through some legal uh, case, some lawsuit. Okay? Uh, apparently, they signed the deal without considering this uh, warrant, and later the warrant holders raised the issue. Okay? Anyway, so I guess I think he pretty much lost maybe one or two million dollars, but it was a st still a lot of money. Okay? that uh, in seven years. Okay. And uh, I was transferred to the new company. And after about one year, I came to Korea. Okay. Anyway, so, yeah, so that's uh, warrant. All right, so why, why uh, a company would uh, issue warrants? There's a similar case. I mean, it's pretty similar to a convertible bond. Okay. So it lowers the agency costs because basically you are giving uh, opportunity to bondholders to share profit by converting or exercising their option. Okay? And uh, it permits the company to sell common stock at a price above the price prevailing at the time of original issue, the same thing as before. Okay? So the exercise price is usually higher than the, the stock price at the time of issue, okay? and uh, finally, the, when when this stock, the, the 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 warrants are exercised, okay? then what that means is a company has issued new shares without paying the uh, the, uh, the 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 issuance cost. Okay? Okay? Um, the difference, is there a difference here? Uh, it comes later. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about the difference later. <clears throat> All right, so how, uh, how, how much is, uh, are, are the warrants worth? The formula value is this. Okay. Uh, max here means uh, we have two items here, either zero or this second item. Okay? Between the two items, greater one. Right? That's the, so the formula value of warrant is greater of these two, okay? either zero or this. Right? The second one, if you look at it, that's the common market price per share minus exercise price per share. <coughs> times number of shares obtainable within with each warrant. Okay? So when the warrants are issued, it specifies a specific number, okay? how many shares you can uh, exercise. I mean, each warrant. Each warrant is worth how many issues, right? All right, so, well, typically in the beginning, when the warrants were 
newly issued, okay, this number would be negative because the exercise price is usually set above the uh, current market stock market price of the stock, right? But you know when the uh, hopefully hopefully the market price of the share will increase, right? And it becomes positive, right? And that will give positive value to the um, warrant. Okay? So when uh, this is negative, does that mean the warrant value is negative? No. Why not? According to this formula, it's either zero or some positive number, right? Because obviously, I mean, it says max of zero or this, right? <clears throat> so when this is negative, right, then the formula value of warrant is zero. Why? If the stock price is below exercise price, then uh, then this whole item is negative, right? But why doesn't it go negative? It says <coughs> max of zero or negative, which means in that case, formula value of warrant will be zero. Why? That's right, because it's an option, right? You don't have to exercise, right? So <coughs> it's a. Uh, you know, it's either zero or pos some positive value, right? Make sure you understand that. Okay? So it's pretty similar to uh, yeah. It's pretty similar to the previous graph, right? If you have uh, share price. Warrant value and if it goes like that, right? And let's say here that will be exercise price. Yeah. So when the share price is below the exercise price the option value, I mean the warrant value, will be zero. Okay? And uh, when the stock price rises above the exercise price, the warrant price rises, just like that. Okay? Same as before. Okay? So this line here, is um, share price minus exercise price times number of shares. This, the yellow curve, yellow well, curve, you can say that's the value of warrants at expiration. Value of warrants at expiration. What that means is before expiration, it will be different. What do you think? Before expiration date, what will be the value of warrant? What, would look, what will it look like? Uh-huh, yeah, just like before, right? It will be slightly above 
that yellow line, yellow curve, right? Again, because of the uh, what? Flexibility, right? You can either exercise it or not, right? Mm, just like the uh, convertible security, right? I'm sure you can understand it easily. Okay? Warrants are often detachable. Okay? What that means is warrant holder can actually sell, sell the warrant and keep the debt. Warrant holders can sell the warrant and keep the debt. Right? So when you purchase the bond, that bond came with the warrant, right? And then you can actually just sell the warrants in the market, right? And it's, you can still hold the bond, right? And of course, the, you know, depending on the market value of the warrants, right? You will decide whether to keep it or sell it, right? Huh? Okay. Let me just finish similarities. Okay, yeah. Yes, pretty quickly, I mean, very quickly. Similarities, we've seen the similarities already, right? Reduce the agency cost. Uh, the, uh, the, you can, it's about, it amounts to issuing stocks at higher price than the prevailing price, right? And uh, uh, the, both the convertibility option and the attachment of warrants results in interest expense uh, I would I would include the saving here, right? Result in interest in expense saving, or preferred dividend saving. In other words, you are saving interest payments or dividends, right? If you issue the uh, bond, then you are e saving interest payment because you can actually offer lower interest when you attach the convertibility, right? Uh, or warrant, okay? And the uh, dividend, the same idea. If you pre offer, if you are issuing preferred stock, right, then you can offer a lower, lower dividend. Okay? The difference here is uh, when the warrants are exercised, company receives additional funds, right? Because the warrant holders are actually paying the price to buy shares, right? It only gives the uh, option to buy at certain price, right? It's not guaranteed. I mean, you are not receiving free stocks, right? So you have to pay this specific price, exercise price, right, to purchase the new stocks, right? So uh, the, the, the company actually receives additional funds, right? Uh, but um, what, what happens when the convertible bonds are converted? There is no additional cash, but what? The, they are removing the debt, right? When the bonds are converted, right, the, the benefit to company is suddenly the amount of debt disappears, right, from their balance sheet, yeah? Fixed them in, fixed them remains on the company's book after exercise of warrants. Yeah. So uh, if the convert with the convertible, the 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 the, 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 the debt is taken off the company's books, so that amount disappears. But with the warrants, you know, just even though they receive s fresh amount of cash, right, the debt, existing debt, still remains on the the books or balance sheet. Okay. Yeah? Final difference, because of the call feature, convertible securities potentially give the company more control than warrants, right? So, you know, you can force the conversion by calling the bond, but there is no way you can force the, the warrants to be access, exercised, right? There is no, yeah. So that's the difference. Well, we're gonna try to finish, we're gonna finish this uh, chapter on Thursday. And we're going to talk about the Black Shores uh, option pricing okay, on Thursday. Any question? All right. I'll see you on Thursday. <laughs>